Here's a stone from the surface of Mars. And if you examine directly in the center here at these shadowy marks, then you'll observe what's left of prehistoric Martian organisms. Or, at minimum, that's likely what you're observing. This is what NASA disclosed in September 2025. Very well could be the clearest sign of life that we've ever found on Mars. Could very well be the most definitive indication of organisms that we have ever discovered on Mars. Which is the most definitive proof ever uncovered of extraterrestrial organisms, and it's within a specimen of stone gathered by the Perseverance Mars rover. Now, what is it regarding these marks that indicates organisms must live on another world? Well, that is complex, but today we're going to work it out. Initially, let's discuss where on Mars the extraterrestrial stone was discovered. Here's the Jezero Crater, the touchdown location for NASA's Perseverance rover, the most sophisticated robotic investigator we've ever dispatched to the Crimson World. NASA selected this touchdown location for a very particular purpose. It's thought that there was a period billions of years back when this circular depression was filled with flowing water. And the explanation why we believe Jezero was actually a prehistoric lake is due to this opening in the edge where we observe pretty obvious proof that a stream of water has moved down from the adjacent uplands and poured into the crater. That is the location where Perseverance touched down in 2021 at the entrance of a stream. And that's also where NASA thought that they would have the greatest conceivable opportunity at discovering proof, just like what we are examining today. So, if organisms lived on Mars, then it would have been situated in a location just like this. But that doesn't mean it would be simple to discover. It required three years of investigation before Perseverance finally encountered this one very unusual-looking stone protruding up out of the dust. What makes this stone so unique is that shadowy recurring design that runs along the exterior. NASA labels the tiny specks poppy seeds, and the bigger shapes are leopard marks. Now, let's create a sense of proportion here before we proceed any further, because the photograph that we've been examining is actually an extreme magnification. So, even the larger leopard marks are just one or two millimeters wide indicating that the extraterrestrial organisms responsible for this would have been very tiny. We're discussing microorganisms and germs, which on their own are too small to be discovered by perseverance. So what we're searching for is proof that these microorganisms once lived the things they would have left behind. And that is what those shadowy marks represent, a waste material created by active microbial organisms. In very basic terms, this is petrified Martian waste. Or, at minimum, that's the most probable explanation we have right now. The initial thing that NASA did after noticing the mysterious design was to send in the rover's robotic limb and use its complete collection of scientific tools to start determining what was happening down there. The preliminary observations revealed that this is layered stone, indicating that it was created slowly over millions of years as the stream moved through and placed layers of minerals into the muddy terrain. Then as those layers got compressed down under their own mass and the stream dries up, eventually the mud solidified into rock. On Earth, layered stones often hold fossils because plants and creature remains will get trapped in the layers and maintained by the hardening process. What's fascinating about this specific location is that it holds some of the newest layered stone that NASA has ever discovered on Mars. It's about 3 billion years ancient. That indicates the time frame for a livable Mars is broader than we would have believed. And if accurate, it informs us that there was organisms on Earth and Mars at the same period, both advancing in a very comparable way. But the only way to know, certainly, is to go deeper with our examination. You can observe this in a self-image taken by Perseverance in July 2024. The team controlling the rover already understood that this would be a moment worth recording. There's the stone right in the center of the frame. And the small white circle is where the rover's drill penetrated and removed a specimen that might someday be transported here to Earth for additional study. But we'll return to that later. Over on Mars, Perseverance was able to supply us with some preliminary discoveries that amazed NASA researchers. The rover identified two iron-based minerals within the leopard marks, vivianite and pyrite. Now, we frequently discover these minerals within comparable designs here on Earth. 
And when we do, it's usually connected with microbial organisms, also known as germs. Particularly, vivianite and pyrite are discovered in the presence of decomposing plants and creatures. Microorganisms will arrive and consume all of that deceased organic material. Then they produce these iron-rich minerals as a secondary product. It's microscopic waste. It's crucial to understand that you don't require a deceased creature on Mars to nourish those microorganisms. You only require the components of that creature. That is what the germs consume. And this is what we term organic material. Now, here's something to consider. 96% of your body weight is composed from just four essential elements in different combinations. Those components are oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. We understand that Mars holds this organic material, mainly in crater areas where it was transported to the exterior by asteroid collisions. But there were a lot of organics discovered within the same stone that was covered by the leopard marks. But that alone doesn't indicate that there is organisms. So, we've been in pursuit of more proof. And that's what the Vivianite and the Pyrite supply for us. Now we have the components for organisms, and we have the secondary product of organisms. So therefore, in order to link the dots, we must have organisms on Mars, correct? Well, that's not precisely what NASA is stating. They're being very cautious to keep a carefully optimistic but not conclusive tone in their announcement of this new finding. And there is solid reasoning for that. Here's a video from 1996 that displays American President Bill Clinton revealing the finding of what seemed to be a petrified organism form within an asteroid that separated from the exterior of Mars and arrived on Earth in Antarctica. What they discovered definitely did appear like a small worm, but on closer examination, this turned out to be a non-biological mechanism. It was just water interacting with the stone and producing a worm-like formation. So having the president inform the world that you discovered petrified extraterrestrials, but then it turns out to be just a strange-looking stone, that's not a positive look. NASA also did something comparable 20 years earlier during the Viking expeditions of 1976. That was the initial time the American space program had ever arrived on Mars. And researchers were enthusiastic to discover the initial signs of Martian organisms. They had the Viking probe perform a basic experiment where it collected a small quantity of Martian soil and then sprayed it with a mixture of water and nutrients. The concept was that if there were microorganisms alive in the soil, then they would consume the water, eat the food, and produce a secondary product very comparable to what we've been discussing so far. And in this case, NASA was particularly searching for the discharge of CO2 gas from the specimen. And that is precisely what they discovered. After the nutrient water was added to the soil, it generated CO2, which would suggest a biological mechanism. And for a moment there, researchers believed they had demonstrated the existence of extraterrestrial organisms. But the celebration didn't continue long. While extraterrestrial biology is one explanation for the CO2, it's not the sole explanation. There are plenty of chemical mixtures that can generate CO2 gas, like when you add vinegar to baking soda. Neither of those substances are alive, and there was no proof of organic material discovered in the Viking soil specimens, indicating there were none of the components for organisms to exist in the first place. So all they really had was a bit of CO2 gas, and the experiment was marked inconclusive. The astronomer Carl Sagan created a very significant phrase on his 1980s television program Cosmos. He would frequently state, Extraordinary claims demand extraordinary proof. And that is the path that NASA is taking with their latest finding on Mars. In the years since the leopard marks were initially discovered, researchers from around the globe have been attempting to demonstrate that this is not a finding of extraterrestrial organisms. Just examine how many names are included on this research document. If the proof can withstand under extreme examination and no other reasonable explanation can be discovered, then it might just be sufficient to be considered extraordinary. And that is where we are right now. There are only two other potential explanations for the leopard marks that could contradict the extraterrestrial theory. One is a high-temperature reaction. 
The shadowy designs could have been created by very hot water in a range of 150 to 200 degrees Celsius that interacted with the stone at some point billions of years back. But the exterior of Mars is cold, and there's no proof to indicate that this riverbed was ever subjected to high heat of any type. We also understand that Vivianites particularly can only create at low temperature. They would actually have been eliminated by heat if there ever had been any. So this likely didn't occur. And explanation two is an acidic water reaction, which states that the marks might have been created by a very extended exposure to a very acidic liquid. But there's no other proof in the stone to indicate that it was ever covered in acid. In fact, they also found a mineral called olivine in the same stone. And olivine can't create in an acidic environment. So this likely didn't occur either. And that leaves us with the extraterrestrial microorganisms. In this case, it's the only theory that can't be contradicted. So, by the method of elimination, it's the theory that is most probable to be accurate, which indicates that for the initial time ever, we can confidently state that there was likely organisms on Mars. And this is incredible. It would indicate that organisms is not exclusive to the Earth. You don't require some incredibly rare set of circumstances for this mechanism to begin. All you require are the essential components, which is basically just liquid water and organic material. And anywhere in the universe where we discover those components, we will discover organisms. But unfortunately, we still can't state this with 100% certainty. And that's because we understand the proof is not complete. There's only so much that the tools on board Perseverance can inform us. This is a mobile research laboratory that was launched into space and then arrived on Mars. It can accomplish a lot, but it can't accomplish everything. There's so many more tests that we could conduct on the leopard marks if we had access to the specimen here on Earth, but we don't. And it could be some time before we ever do, if ever. Perseverance has gathered 27 stone cores from the Jezero crater and its surrounding riverbeds. It cuts them out and then stores them in metal containers that are then left behind on the exterior. The strategy was always that another Mars rover would follow along in the near future and gather the specimens, then load them up into a return vehicle that would launch from Mars and eventually arrive on Earth with the stones in tow. Mars specimen return is complex and costly. And as of right now, the U.S. government doesn't want to pay the expense for NASA to complete the mission. They'd rather someone else do it. And even though NASA has more experience arriving on Mars than any other organization in the world, in fact, the only other space agency that has ever arrived successfully on Mars is China. The Chinese have their own Mars specimen return mission planned. It's scheduled to launch in 2028 and arrive back home with the Martian stone in 2032. The Chinese can afford it. They likely have the technical capability to accomplish it. And now they understand exactly where to go searching for the initial real proof of extraterrestrial organisms. Not that it should really matter who finds what correct. This is about science, but it also does kind of matter, doesn't it? This is science that will transform everything we believe we understand about organisms and the universe. And NASA is so close, yet so distant. But it's crucial to remember that none of this is impossible. The money is there. We just need the collective will to spend it on a project that will be difficult, that might fail, and we'll have a timeline that extends beyond the four-year election cycle. So it very well could be that a finding like this, the initial real proof of extraterrestrial organisms, is precisely what we needed at this moment to remind the people in charge that NASA science is crucial, that it's worth investing in. One way or another, the truth is out there. All we need to do is go out and retrieve it.